What's up guys? JK with Porn Reboot here. You know where I'm coming from. On my way back from the gym. Today I am going to talk about depression and porn addiction. This is probably the third time I'm talking about it, but in our Facebook group, and if you haven't, there's a link to join it in the description below. But in our Facebook group, I asked everybody, I was like, guys, what are your your main challenges right now in your life as it pertains to porn addiction? What do you feel is holding you back? A ton of guys were like stress and depression, but depression was right there at the top. So I'm going to address depression, but I'm going to do it in a way that might be a little bit different from what you would typically expect. So I'd like to give a disclaimer first, because there's always going to be that one person who shows up on this video, he has no idea what this channel is about. He just goes like, oh shit, porn and depression. I have nothing better to do. Let me watch this and then totally judge this dude. <laughs> then he'll jump in the comment section before he's finished and he'll go, go like, this is so dangerous. You know, depression is a real thing. It's clinical, it has nothing to do with porn. So my disclaimer is if you're just showing up here and even if you're subscribed, I appreciate the subscription. I'm going to be talking about depression as I have noticed it as a professional working with men who are struggling with pornography, all right? So this is just based on what I have seen is most common in men who have sexually compulsive disorders. Now, there are two groups of men who struggle with depression as I see it. The first group is men who are successful. And by successful, I mean that financially and in terms of their lifestyle, many of the things that they want and status, they have achieved those things. Now, if you are a successful individual by American standards, you know, Western standards, and you are unhappy, there are two reasons why you're unhappy. The first is you are an overachiever. You don't know how to be happy. You connected your happiness to achievements, to your hustle, to your grind. So there's always another achievement that you feel you need to reach to be happy. And if you are not achieving that, or you're not achieving something, or you're not going for the next challenge, you feel horrible, you feel terrible. Doesn't matter what your net worth is, doesn't matter how much money you've got in the bank account, doesn't matter what your accomplishments are. You're just not happy. And again, it's because you have linked happiness to accomplishments if you're successful and you know you have a lot of people around you 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 feel that there shouldn't be any good reason why you're depressed but you still find yourself depressed there are probably two reasons for that the first is that you're lonely and not many people are going to be able to relate to this and in fact not many people watching this video will believe this but it is a fact there's a certain level of success that you can attain. A lot of it is connected to net worth. Where it's lonely. You get, you really get lonely. The reason why is the higher up you get, the more difficult it is to relate to people. The more things you've got to keep to yourself because to get to that level, you cannot think the way everybody else thinks. So what happens is there are very few people who are at that level that you can relate to and most of them are very busy so you don't have time to hang out with them. So you're up there at the top in whatever field, profession, slash career that you're in, lifestyle, and you're lonely. So you don't really have many people that you can connect with or you're just so busy and so consumed with your career and your achievements that you just didn't take the time over the years to make those human connections. And human connection is very important because it's a healthy way of releasing dopamine. It's a healthy way of releasing, you know, bonding chemicals like oxytocin. So when you are around people and you're, you feel connected, you're going to feel happy. You're going to feel less depressed. Another reason why you would be successful and everything looks good, you're comfortable in your life, you, you're fine mentally, but you still find yourself being depressed, is you are hanging around negative people. Like your environment 
is shitty. Your community, excuse me, is shit. Toxic people. It could even be your family, you know? Your kids could fucking hate you. You know, your spouse is making your life a living hell. <laughs> you know, the people in your profession are just unhappy. People in your profession, the people you work with are just people who make you so unhappy and you're negative. Those things can be changed. It's just a challenge when a lot of it is tied to your success. You know, your family, your career. It's difficult to change those things. All the years you spent grinding and connecting success with happiness. Those things are challenging to change, but rest assured, they can be adjusted. Now that's the first type of person. The second type of person may not have even gotten to this point in the video because they're like, fuck it, this doesn't apply to me. I don't know what the fuck JK is talking about. So they may not even watch this, but if you're still here, congratulations, because this is going to be quite relevant to you. So most guys who have not reached where they want to be in life, all right, fall into three categories. And they fall into three categories because in each of these categories, you find yourself being very unhappy and depressed. The first is you're the type of guy who hates himself because of your just inability to achieve the things that you want to achieve. You know, you look at yourself and your standards are so high. You're like, I should be here. I should be achieving this. I should be getting this. I should have this. Whether it's in terms of lifestyle, relationships, sexual partners, finances, career, whatever it is, but you're not there. And your frustration with not knowing how to make headway or trying to do something and failing over and over again breeds self-loathing. So you just don't like yourself because you feel like you're unable to move forward. A lot of negative self-talk going on. That makes you depressed. The second type of guy is you are the type of individual who is preoccupied with your, let's just call it lack of status. You're not taking action. You just feel that you are disadvantaged in terms of looks, in terms of your socioeconomic status, in terms of your racial background, whatever it is, the point is, you spend a lot of time just looking for proof that, you know, that society's against you. I'm not good looking enough. I'm from the wrong background, you know, and because of my background, women are not gonna find me attractive, and that's why I'm still a virgin at my age. That's why I can't attract a certain caliber of women because of whatever, you know, I'm not able to make money beliefs just about status and these things hold you back and you're gonna fall into these groups like black pill you start getting these black pill beliefs and these incel identity involuntarily celibate and you know these guys who believe that you know looks is everything and you spend so much time obsessing about the things you don't have that makes you depressed because we have something in our brain called the reticular activating system. It's kind of like when you, I've talked about it before, if you're in an airport and they're calling different people's names over the intercom or whatever, you don't hear them. But if somebody calls your name immediately, regardless of what you're doing, you could be fucking around on your phone, you're immediately going to become aware of your name. And that's your reticular activating system. It focuses on something and it just removes everything else from the background. That one thing that's important to you. Kind of like when you buy a new car or you've decided that that's the car I'm gonna buy. Guess what? You suddenly start seeing the car everywhere on the road. That's your reticular activating system. That has been activated. The funny thing is you can use that for success. You can use that to actually hit your goals and only choose to focus on things that are going to bring you success. You can also use it in your recovery, but that's a whole different story. That's also part of my system. But your reticular activating system in, in this case is focusing on all the things that are just showing you proof that, hey, 
I don't have status. I have this advantage. That's going to make you depressed. And the final group of guys are those of you who y'all are too smart for your own good. Like literally you have high IQ. Intelligent individual, but the problem is you overthink. You think too much, you read a lot of books, you watch a lot of videos, you have a lot of theories, you understand the foundational principles of anything that comes your way that could help you. The problem is your high intelligence comes with cynicism and cynicism breeds negativity. You become a cynic and sometimes you just become a skeptic. And unfortunately, all that negativity that it breeds doesn't allow you to move forward. You become mired, you become stuck in this bog, this swamp, this quicksand of negativity due to overthinking. You know, I don't think I'm the most intelligent guy out there. I don't know what my IQ is. I really don't believe in that. But even if I did, I wouldn't think it was ridiculously high. I do know that I have a decent EQ, if that exists, just my ability to understand people's emotions, more importantly, my emotions. So I just take action, you know? I don't think too much. I just fucking go like, well, I'll just fucking work hard, and if I work hard enough, I'll figure out what I'm good at and what I'm not good at, and I'll focus on the things that I'm good at. But the point is, people like me, and many men like me too, we just take action. We're not thinking too much. And maybe it's because we are not the smartest guys but some of you are just too smart for your own good. And again, that just makes you very upset. And I feel bad because I talk to many men. There are many men in my program who are highly intelligent. In fact, I read a lot, okay? I read probably just over 100 books a year, but I mean, that doesn't mean I'm intelligent or anything. But these guys, like they have read a ton of books. They understand things. They ask me questions. I'm just like, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't understand that concept, but I can help you quit porn, you know, but these guys are so unhappy and it's really rough when you are an intelligent person, you know you're intelligent, but it seems like you just cannot make progress in life. Just nothing is working out for you, okay? So again, those are the three categories. Men who just hate themselves because they're just not able to make progress, men who are obsessed with their status in life and finally men who are highly intelligent and that intelligence turns out to be your Achilles heel unfortunately so those are the things that I actually in my opinion and my experience just working with a ton of guys those are the things that make you depressed if you related with what I said earlier in the video then you kind of know what to do maybe just this is just for awareness so you know what to do <laughs> and you have the resources to take some action but for the latter three you gotta work like you've literally got to take action in your life and you've got to push yourself and one of the best things you can do for yourself is staying away from social media for a while because if you fall into the first category and you're one of those guys who feels like he just can't make any progress. You just look at yourself and like, this is not where I should be. I should be here, but I don't have those things. My standards are so high. You're not taking action. That's the common denominator with these three categories. You're not taking action. You're spending a lot of time just watching motivational stuff and you're going to fall prey to a lot of these motivational gurus out there. You know, you're gonna read those books, watch those videos, follow the Instagram pages. It's not that they, they can't help you, but it's, you're not taking enough action, okay? For the second group, those of you who keep looking for proof that you don't have status, those of you who are obsessed with that, you've got to extricate yourself from these communities. If you are black pill, if you are MGTOW, if you are identify as an incel, and you may not, but you may just hang around those websites and those communities, those Reddit forums, listen, listen, get away from there for a while, okay? You have no idea the impact this is having on you. 
is holding you back. Step away from it. I know the community is supportive. I know that you go into other communities and it's going to be challenging because you're like, these people think differently. Step away and work on yourself and take action, okay? Again, action is going to help you. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. You can elevate your position in life. You can elevate your self-image. You can elevate your position in life. You can change the way you feel. You can end up feeling like a productive member of society. You can end up feeling that you have achieved things in your life. And they don't have to be external things. They could just be emotional milestones in your life. But all that begins with changing your self-image. But you cannot change your self-image if you're always comparing yourself to other people or if you are always looking for proof that you are disadvantaged. And for the final group, those of you who are highly intelligent, you all are in a very fortunate and unfortunate position because all you need to do is get a little bit humble. All you need to do is accept the fact that you may be a little bit cynical and that cynicism might be causing you to become a negative person. And that negativity is definitely holding you back and making you unhappy, you know? So what does that mean? That means drop your ego a little bit and go out there and do the basic shit. You know, I'll get on the phone sometimes with a very smart person and everything I say, you know what they're gonna say? They'll say, yeah, JK, I get, I, I see what you're doing. I get the concept behind that and they'll try to explain it, which is why one of my rules, just so you know, <laughs> One of my rules is no opinions. That's one of my rules. If you work with me, I don't want your fucking opinion. You know why? Because I'm helping you to end an addiction to pornography and masturbation, right? So whatever you have to say, I don't want to know because I don't want to be where you are. Your opinion is fucking irrelevant. Follow the system end your behavior with porn and masturbation and move on with your life. We're not here to discuss philosophy. Oh, intelligent guys hate that shit. <laughs> and I'm like, no opinion, no bitching, no whining, no moaning. I'm very much a disciplinarian in my system, but I digress. Intelligent guys would be like, yeah, I know the concept. Yeah, JK, I know that. I was like, well, if you've known this for so long, why haven't you done it? Um, um. I don't know, just, I, they have no reason, you know? I was talking to a guy the other day, and he has a health issue that probably could be solved and taken care of in a few weeks if he would just go visit a specialist. And he can afford to visit a specialist. But no. He wants to read all the books about it. He wants to study for months and months and months and fix this health issue that is causing him discomfort every day of his life. He's uncomfortable. But he could just go to a specialist, but no, too smart for his own good. He's, his ego is like, you can figure this out. You can do it. And many of you are still stuck watching pornography because you're too smart for your own good. Oh, I've read all the books, I've been on the forums, I've understand, then why the fuck are you still jacking off, you know? You're stuck there, that makes you negative, all right? Okay, now I'm starting to rant, <laughs> all right? But the bottom line is, for those of you who are struggling with this, all you gotta do is take action. If you don't know how to take action, listen, start by joining our Facebook group, okay? It's free, I'm not pitching you anything, I'm not telling you shit. Just join the group, get your ass an accountability partner, it's free, and start taking action, you know? If you need help, if you're just like, yeah, JK, I get it, but I just, I'm, it's not enough, then reach out and find out if you're a good fit to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Trust me, if you have a problem with discipline, if you have a problem with taking action, I will take you there. I will make you the most disciplined person. If you work with me, you are gonna be more disciplined than you've ever been at any point in your life. So if you need help with implementation, if you're like, JK, I hate to say it, but I need to be pushed. Just for a little while, and then once I gain momentum and I understand how it works and you keep me accountable and you are tough on me, no excuses, I'll get there. 
you know, I need that help, then reach out. There's a link to apply and, you know, find out if you're a good fit to work with me. I'll tell you right now, it's not going to happen immediately. There is a wait list to work with me, but go ahead and put in an application. If not, I have a shit ton of free resources. There's so much free stuff, but just start with the Facebook group, guys, because people are making some big moves in there, just free of charge. You know, guys who are serious about their recovery. All right, so I hope that answers the question for those of you who are like, why the fuck am I depressed and what can I do about it? For those of you who are like, JK, that's stupid. Some of you might be like, JK, is that your answer? Are you serious? I need to take action and work hard. Are you kidding me? Let me tell you something. I used to be a depressed, skinny, low self-esteem, masturbating loser. That's who I used to be. I was a loser. I felt so bad about myself. All I did was go online and bitch about stuff and then watch porn. And on top of that, I somehow still felt entitled to beautiful women. I was like, yeah, I should date beautiful women. Why can't I get this shit in life? I should do that. I know this. I've read this book. I know this stuff. I was living in a bubble of loserhood and stupidity. And I had to slowly start working my way out of it. I had to start taking responsibility. It starts with that. It starts with identifying who you are. Okay, here's my problem. My problem is I keep identifying with this specific type of status. My problem is I'm too hard on myself. I started by literally praising myself for the little wins that I have. Every day, I was like, JK, okay. At the end of the day, I would ask myself, how did I spend my day? Did I spend my day pitting myself? Did I throw a pity party today? You know, did I go the extra mile or did I work a little bit and like, fuck it, I'm lazy. You know, I would ask myself that question every night before I went to bed. I would count my wins. What are the great things that I did today? And they could be little things like, dude, you didn't hit snooze today. That's how I started with little things like that. I didn't hit snooze. I woke up. I went through my morning routine. I went to the gym. I pushed all the way to the end. Even though I didn't feel like it, I felt off that day. I wanted to, you know, cut my workout in half, but I didn't. You know, I studied for an hour. That's something that was very difficult for me because I have ADD. You know, I sat down and I focused and I forced myself to study. All those little wins started stacking up and I started feeling good about myself. I didn't need anybody to tell me, you know, like you're good at this. Nobody, nobody gives a shit, guys. Nobody's coming for you. No one is gonna help you. No one is gonna praise you. You have to praise yourself. You have to pull yourself out of this shit because nobody gives a fuck, okay? So that's how you start building yourself up. And then I started realizing things about myself. I was like, well, I have all this ambition and the reason I don't have anything, the reason I don't have the woman I want, the reason I don't have the intimacy I want, the reason I'm broke is because I'm not taking action. The reason that I'm viewing pornography, the reason I'm masturbating is because I'm not taking the time to develop the right coping skills. I'm not taking the time to work on myself. I'm not disciplined about my boundaries. I started working on those things. So that's the purpose of this video, all right? Not to fix your depression. But the purpose of this video is to bring you awareness and to cause you to sit back and go like, maybe this guy who's just yelling at me through the screen has a point, okay? And if it's caused you to think and ponder a little bit, then my job is done, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go for a little bit of a run before it gets too hot out here in the desert. I appreciate you guys. I'm JK, your brother in the struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. And I'll see you later this week.